This Disney Plus thing. This Disney Plus thing. I mean, we've been talking about the Mandalorian, the MCU television shows, and all that other stuff. The Lady and the Tramp, live action, if you want to call it, remake. But that's not it, folks. There's a reason Disney bought Fox, and that is that way, that is so they can buy all the good stuff. So basically, they're remaking some properties. And one of the properties they're making is Home Alone. Now, somebody put out the point, well, I mean, we're modern. It's a modern time since that Home Alone film. We have phones now. And I, I agree with that. You definitely have to be a lot more creative that, with this movie than the first one. However, if they do find a, a great storyline that's not like... Uh, I mean, it's basically a rehash, but that makes no sense since we have uh, since we have phones. But if they do find something that makes sense and is creative and is not just a rehash of Home Alone, either though I mean the character has to be Home Alone, but I if they do find that, I think this movie could be lots of fun. However, I mean, I'm not thrilled with this. I love the first Home Alone, Home Alone Two: Lost in New York. By the way, one of the most underrated movies of all time. I have a great time with that movie that's the same thing but i still have a great time with that movie but i mean i as somebody who's a fan of the first home alone i'm like i am with a lot of people i'm not huge on it i mean a lot of people poo poo on remakes but hey the departed was a remix nobody is talking about that there's a bunch of great movies are remakes but i mean i don't know I'm just, again, like that, like I've said, we're in more, more modern times. I don't know if this movie's going to end up being a forgettable mess or it's a forgettable rehash of the original. Or, I mean, again, who knows? This movie can be amazing, but as of right now, I'm just not thrilled. But they're also bringing up back Night at the Museum and then The Diary of a Wimpy Kid stuff, which I've actually read some of those books, and they're they're fun books. I mean... They're not amazing, but they also talked about Planet of the Apes. Now, at CinemaCon, they were talking about Deadpool, Alien, and Predator, and then, they, and then they also brought up Planet of the Apes, but nobody was really talking about that. But then they talked about Planet of the Apes again and how they're going to continue Planet of the Apes. Now, they're probably, I don't know how far they're going to continue, because obviously, once the original Planet of the Apes comes in, um, they're probably going to go up to that point, I'm guessing. But I love the, the Matt Reeves, well, Matt Reeves directed two of them, but I love the the Apes trilogy. I think it, they're bl bloody brilliant, some of the best films we've had in the last decade, and probably the best trilogy that we've had in a while, up there with the Dark Knight trilogy, and up there with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, and so on and so forth. I love the Apes trilogy. Now, I'm not, I'm definitely not as hesitant with this as I am with the Home Alone, because I think you can do a lot with this Apes trilogy. Now, uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is that they do the same thing, but with Caesar's son. And spoiler alert for War for the Planet of the Apes, but Caesar dies at the end. And if they do the same thing with the son, it makes me a little bit worried. But again, you can do like some awesome spin-off stories with some other apes or humans off in a different part of the world that can be really cool, like in Africa or in Europe or like some tropical place or like, I don't know, Brazil or something. Like, I think that can be really cool. I, maybe we can get something in Antarctica. Who knows? And I think that it could be very interesting if they are creative with this. But again, with all these like remakes that they change it up and if, if they change it up it could definitely be something really cool but if they don't i'm just lazy with it and just making it you know to grab attention and make money off of it then i mean it doesn't make me excited now you can say well you love Di lion king and that was basically the same thing but i am very biased with lion king i'll admit to that <laughs> but I, I mean it changed some stuff with lion king but not everything but I still love Lion King. I don't care. But with Home, but with Home Alone and Apes, I mean, it's, we've seen it before. I mean, that, I mean that's the thing when you compare that when you compare like Apes to Lion King. Lion King was not a sequel. A Apes, the, the, what they do with Apes will be sequels. Now I'm excited because I've loved the Apes trilogy so much. And as far as Home Alone and those other ones go, and I don't care for Night of the Museum, and I don't care for the Diary of a Kid, and as far as I'm concerned, I don't really care for Home Alone either. But Planet of the Apes, I am interested. I am definitely interested if they put some creativity into it. Now, at the same time, they also brought out some bundles 
that they're going to that for Disney Plus and they're saying they announced a 12.99 bundle for Disney Plus Hulu and ESPN Plus. Now that is a fantastic bundle. Now what I've heard is that you basically save 5 bucks off of that, which is pretty good, but you don't get the Hulu with no commercials. You get the Hulu with commercials, but either way that is fantastic. I mean, Hulu has lots of great stuff. I mean, hands I mean, I don't have Hulu, but here Handsmaid's Tale is fantastic. And the ESPN Plus, you get lots of sports stuff there. And then Disney Plus, I mean, I mean, you got a lot of stuff there as we've talked about over and over and over again. But, I, I mean, I think that's a pretty good deal now. I am one of those pessimistic people that would be like, oh, this is only going to be a matter of time before they raise up the prices from, like, this twelve ninety nine to, I don't know what price, or the original price for Disney Plus from six ninety nine to, I don't know, fifteen ninety nine or something like that. But I am surprised. I'm actually really surprised they came out with numbers as low as these ones. But I am definitely, definitely excited for Disney Plus. Either though some of this stuff, I'm like, yeah, but The Mandalorian and all these Marvel shows, I am definitely in. And Disney has a big catalog, especially now with the Fox stuff. And speaking of Fox, so Fox, especially when it comes to the superheroes like Dark Phoenix, and mainly Dark Phoenix, that's the only one they've had come out this year. It has not done well for Disney now, and to the point where they have just put it on. They're like, you know what? We got to put a little bit of our pixie dust on here. We got to just, just, just slash. We got to just slash it and give it to Kevin Feige and see what he can do with it. Now that includes Deadpool and all of their Fox superhero properties. Now X Men, we already knew Fantastic Four. We already knew because they already mentioned that Deadpool. Um, you know, I said before, there's characters like a Venom that I don't care if there are or not. Deadpool's nature is rated R. His raunchiness is absolutely rated R. His cursing, the sexual content, everything is rated R. All the Deadpool's nature is rated R, and they've already established the rated R nature of Deadpool. Now you could all again, if they're creative with it, they can make something really good with like his character. Um, it's interacting with other characters like a Thor or Peter Parker, or Captain Marvel, or sort or some other character, or old old man Rogers would be a hilarious. But I mean, I don't. I, I just want Deadpool to be by himself. I'm tired of superheroes being in the this huge cinematic universe. That's why one of the reasons I'm so excited for Joker. I mean, not only because it looks so amazing, but I'm tired. This like I love the MCU. I I. I want the Fantastic Four in the MCU, to be honest, but the X-Men, I don't want to be in the MCU, and I don't want Deadpool to be in the MCU either, because I just, I don't want every single superhero to be in a cinematic universe, I want them to have their own thing, and just not be a part of this huge thing, because then it just might turn into a mess. I mean, Infinity War, you can say, some people said it was a mess, I mean, it was definitely on the verge of being definitely very filling, but it didn't, but with all these characters, I mean, I think that is just a lot, especially for a guy like Faye, who I love, but I, again, if they are creative with it, this can be really cool, but I am not huge on Deadpool going over to Marvel, I mean, either the, so basically, uh, Dark Phoenix costed Disney $170 million, and look, I mean, Deadpool also is a successful franchise so far. The first two Deadpool movies have made a buttload of money, over $800 million, I believe, and they have done good critically in, in audience with the audience. So, I mean, I don't know why Disney would do it to Deadpool, however, but... You still have Fox Searchlight there, and but just little by little, the Fox brand is just going underneath, and it's sad because Fox is a classic studio who has been around for ages and ages and ages, and hopefully stays around. You still got Alien and Predator, so you can say that, and Avatar. So, and and then I'll, it also got me thinking: What if Ford versus Ferrari? Either though, it looks amazing, and I love James Mangold. What if it doesn't turn out to be so hot and doesn't make as much money? Then who knows what's going to happen there with Fox Searchlight. And then it's going to be like, oh my god, no. It's like a bad nightmare coming true. But it's, it's, I see why Disney would do this. Because they're losing money. And it's again, at the end of the day, it's business. 
But it, 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 it has me a little bit bummed. I'm not going to lie. It has me a little bit bummed. 